Ah, it's a beautiful day. Let's just close that for now. steering pump, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Okay, let's drain the gas out of the air conditioning system. I've got a specialist coming down who's going to take out the gas and store it. I'm also going to change the dryer as well and also the uh, condenser at the front here. I'm not actually sure whether there is any gas left in this, but we do have to have a look just to make doubly sure before we start taking it to pieces. So we've got Peter here, the air conditioning specialist. We're just going to get the gas out of the system if there is any gas left in there and see what's what. So which one are we going for here? So this is the... I'm going to go on this one here. This, 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 this. You get two of these, a large one and a small one. And this will be... It's connecting up to the top. On the low side. Like that. That's flipped on and then you forward it, which will open the valve. Yeah. And there's nothing in there. Nothing in there. <laughs> There we go. It would show on here. Yeah. It would do, that line goes directly to this gauge, so that would show you if there's any pressure in there. So it has leaked out somewhere. It's leaked out. Yeah. Normally, it's the compressor and with the shaft seal. Yeah. And because the gas is in with the oil of the compressor. Yeah. Um, on the low side, if it sits for a while, the rubber dries out. Uh, it yeah. leaks pretty much like drive shafts um, and everything like that. Cause it was, I think it was while, kind of working, but um, yeah, I think it's been sitting for a while. And if they've been sitting and they, if they're worn out. Yeah. But there's, there's nothing there anymore. Nothing there. Right, so that, that's <laughs> yeah. the whole system completely empty, so I can just start to take, start to take it a bit Yeah, you can start taking this nothing there to reclaim, I'm oh, afraid. Yeah. The plan is basically to change yeah. the whole lot. And, um, so you know, really when you take things off, once you take the pipes apart yeah make sure you clean them take if you're going to keep the pipes say the pipes sticking through here from your heater matrix yeah because your evaporator will be behind your heater matrix right so make sure you take them up properly so seal them off and maybe put a plastic bag over and then seal that again yeah so if oil, any oil clips past the tape you've still got it sealed from atmosphere okay right and then when you've got all the bits together we'll put it on a long vacuum Preferably be on a warm day so it won't boil anything off inside yeah. and give it a good long vacuum. That way then we can test it on a vacuum to see if it's leaking. Yeah. And then when I've, when I've changed all the bits, how do we recharge it? Well, we put it on a vacuum. It's simple really. Put it on a vacuum, good long vac. Yep. Um, and then be satisfied with that, you can just weigh a charge in with um, a, bottle, a fresh bottle of gas yep. and a set of scales. Okay. And you just weigh a charge in. Okay. And the charge will be on the nameplate on the front bonnet somewhere. Yeah, it's currently laying in my garden. <laughs> so if not, you can always look it up. Yeah. I'm sure you can. Brilliant. All right, mystery solved. Well, that didn't take long, did it? No, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> so yeah, this is the that's the reclaim bottle, isn't it? This is an empty reclaim bottle, which has been backed out and is clean. Yeah. So, and this <laughs> is the reclaim pump, which will pump the gas out and push it into the bottle weigh the bottle beforehand so if you had some gas in it weigh the bottle with electronic scales you know, what it weighs when it's empty yeah. evacuate your gas into there through your pump and then once you finish you can weigh the bottle and you can tell how much gas you've taken out of the system so oh, okay, if yeah. your system took you know 800 grams and you only put 300 in there you know you're short of gas yeah so you know you've lost that's what we would have done here so if if we'd have taken gas out and we knew how much was supposed to be in there yeah 
and only took say 150 grams out of the thing more. Whereas the rest of it, the rest of it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, you've yeah. got a leak. Yeah. So you reckon it was, might have been leaking from there? It could have been. The only way you'll prove that is to take this off, cap it off, stick it in a big big drum of water and stick nitrogen in it and pressurise oh, really? it and watch for bubbles. Yeah. Or go over with soapy water. But oh, can you, can <laughs> you do that? You can check it just with soapy water. Oh yeah, if, you, if this was run, if this a car was running and you'll say you're losing your gas now and again, yes. and you've got a suspect that then it's running, you could brush soapy water all over there or anywhere with a leak or joint and it will bubble. Oh, okay, and right. It'll show you that there's obviously something wrong with a leak there somewhere. Yeah. Once the car's together, it's very difficult to get to places like this. Yeah, that's it. And places like that where the compressor is very difficult. Yeah. It's easy now because you've got it all stripped off, but... So when you have to run it, you run it, when it is working, you run it every few months because everything dries out, does it? All the seals dry out and everything, or...? Um, from new you'll be all right. Yeah. It's just when... So if you picked an old car up and it hadn't been running for two or three years, then you'd probably find that the seal around the compressor shaft had dried out. Yeah. And there's probably no gas in it. I see. And it's been laying outside. It may have got some moisture in there, it, but... It all depends where it's been, really. So how does the compressor come off, then? Because there's lots of people... Sort of running these cars are 20 years old now, and it'd probably just be easy just to change the compressor. Do you think if there's a I mean, if you can get one with a decent price, I would have yeah. yeah, I would have thought so. It'd been a better idea, I suppose. That just unbolt, wouldn't it? And then they uh, just it's just like um, fitting a, um, an alternator, really. Yeah, it's just it's just driven off with a, with a clutch on the front, which is driven by so an electronic clutch at the front to drive it on and off, right? And then there's just two pipes attached to it, like this bit here, like a little manifold, one bolt that should just come off, and it'll probably have some. It'll have some seals, O-ring seals on it. Yeah. So with this particular motor, it's sort of it's had damage, probably somewhere on its on its condenser, and the gas is because this is the high pressure bit. The gas has sprayed out. Yeah, it might have done. It looks a bit it looks a bit grim around there, but I, yeah. it doesn't look like it's. Um, it might just be age. Yeah. Can we just have a look? And that's so this one is a 2002 uh, condenser. So we, yeah, we've got 20 years on that. I think, haven't we? It could be. If it's been sitting a while, it will definitely the first port of call is the seal around the compressor shaft. Yeah. That's the, that's the first place it goes because it's a mechanical shaft around a seal. Oh, okay, yeah. And when it dries out, obviously the oil's going to come out. Yeah. Same as a drive shaft. Yeah. They leak now and again when they when they, when they perish. And is it normal you say you you put a charge into it basically you get some put a charge into it and then you soak your water or whatever see where it's leaking and then you take. Yeah, I mean it if energy. somebody wants to find out say if this had a slight bit of gas in it and you wanted to keep it all you'd have to pressure test it yeah so you put um, oxygen free nitrogen in it pressure test it up to a pressure um don't go over the head pressure just just to sort of i don't know 150 psi or something yeah and then you can go around the joints go around everywhere that you can see obviously you're not going to if the, if the car's complete you're not going to be able to see most of it yeah um, or just leave it set at a, a set at a pressure, leave it for a couple of hours and see if it drops. Yeah. If it drop, if it doesn't drop, leave it overnight. And then see if you're in the ballpark again of where the pressure is and you'll probably be all right. But if it's, if it starts to drop and you come back and it's come down to twenty pound, you've got a leak somewhere. How do you service them then? If I'm if I'm running a car, the aircon's working all right, what would you do just to keep it in top shape so you haven't got to go through all this hassle? Most garages do a, a, a top up service, they'll have a machine. They plug on, it will weigh the charge out, yeah, and then it will back it and pop it back in again. To oh, okay. Filter it, put it back in if it's clean. Yeah, and just check it's all and working. They'll just, and... the, they just put back the the uh, the mount which is the weighing charge. All oh, right. If you if the only way you find that out if you're running a car and it, it's not as cold as what it was, you think well that's not working properly. It's not as cold as it used to be. Yeah. Just take it to a garage. Garages have a little unit that does everything for them, they just plug it on to here and there and then switch it on and it does it for them. Put your compressor on in the winter time with your heating on, it will de-hum the car, take the moisture, you know, the steam away and also keep your seal lubricated on your compressor. Okay, subframe time, let's clean it up and have a look what we got. We'll take all the bits off it, I'll just show you the underneath, you haven't seen that yet. Yeah, it's rusty, but it's um, hopefully it's okay. But I'm going to use brake cleaner, clean all this up, and then possibly go over it with a wire wheel and uh, see if it's good for powder coating. Okay, take off the anti-roll bar, link bar with a 15mm socket, and I've got a 15mm spanner behind it there. 
It's going to use the breaker bar on here because it's a bit corroded. This side. There we go, that's free. Now we're going to go to the ratchet. Do the same on the other side. Okay, other side's out. We're going to take out the last two bolts holding on the anti-roll bar, so the two brackets. One. And there we go. Okay, so we've got the bracket, it's got a little spacer on the back there, so we need to be sure not to lose that. We can see which side it goes on because we've got the holes there. We're going to take that one off too. Keep these somewhere safe. Oh, and also it's um, tea time, of course. That's better. Right, now we're ready. Okay, so this can come off. Let's have a look. So we've undone the brackets, and that will just lift off like that. And then we have the Bushes around there, we can take these off. Let's put this to one side. And now we're going to take off the gearbox mount. Let's get the ratchet on that. That's the way to do it. Actually, that can spin. Just holds itself there. Oh, strange. Okay. Yeah, that looks fairly worn out, so we'll get a new one of these. And it's just started to rain. <laughs> All right, let's just turn this round, and then I'm going to spray it with brake cleaner and uh, just get the worst of the power steering fluid or oil or whatever it is, just get that off, and then we can have a good look at it. Yeah, the next episode's coming. What do you mean you can't wait? Going as quick as I can. You have to have your bone, take your mind off it. Yeah, that is like well solid, isn't it? That'll be fine. Okay, we've got these four attachments here. One, two, three, four. We're just going to take these off as well. So just get a screwdriver behind them. And they will unclip, so keep those somewhere safe. And take off the anti-roll bar bushes. These are pretty worn out, so they do come off. A lot easier than it was getting the back ones on. There we go, and we're gonna get the anti-roll bar blasted as well at the same time, and also the radiator bracket, we'll get that done too. And put all the bolts in label bags. Yeah, these have little plastic guides on, tiny little plastic sort of pins. So uh, yeah, we'll have to replace these and make sure that we get um, proper ones of these back on there. So yeah, have to fully refurbish them. So just clean it up a little bit. You can see the proper the Ford mark on there, so I will try and save this subframe if possible. Yeah, so I'm not going to go too crazy on this, so that's had a really good inspection there. There's nothing wrong with that at all, it's all just surface rust. So with the rear subframe, I sort of wire wheeled it down to <laughs> almost shiny, and uh, I didn't need to because in the end it goes in, it gets blasted, then it gets zinc treated, then it gets powder coated, so you don't really need to. I'm just looking for any massive corrosion or any holes or anything that would need to be corrected, but this is absolutely fine. So now we're good to put this in the van, and then we'll take it off and get it powder coated.
Okay, so now we know the air conditioning is empty, we can get down here and undo these two connections here. So I'm gonna undo this and undo that, pull these out, and then the condenser should come free of the car. Okay, there we go, that's free. And we've got the little um, O-ring there as well. That's it. And then we can just lift the condenser out. That's what we've got inside there. And also we can see that it's a um, original condenser to the car. So we've got 27th of February, 2002. Basildon, so yeah, it's um, been in there since the car was built, 20 years old. And now I'm gonna take this down to the powder coaster with all the other stuff as well, because this is an original piece and it looks all right. So I'm gonna get that uh, cleaned up and then powder coated at the same time. I just need to raise this out of the way. So I'm gonna tie this up or hook it somewhere and then just undo that radiator bracket. Just put the bolt back into the chassis leg. There's another bolt there. I need to keep hold of that as well. Here we go. There it is, that's in really nice condition. It's just a bit grubby. So this one is um, a yeah, Ford piece again, made in Spain. So uh, yeah, we can take this off to the powder coaters and get that uh, blasted and powder coated. So now we've got the best axis you'll ever have to take off the manifold now. So we can just undo the nuts here and then we can literally withdraw the whole lot there. So we'll undo it, struggle these out. We'll have to get these out as the next job, take these out take all this off then we can change the oil separator and I'm also going to change the catalytic converter I wasn't going to do it but I think yeah you know it is um, it's all exposed all really easy to do and uh, it is something that I probably want to do so I'm going to try and find um, a uh, type approved cat so um, try and get the best one I can on there and uh, yeah get that changed too we can also see the air conditioning compressor as well as Peter was saying it's uh, you just undo it from there you take this off and then um, yeah you simply unbolt it so there's nothing at all in the way here so all I've got to do is take off the bolt and undo that connection and then we'll have a new AC compressor on there too. Now I'm going to disconnect the power steering rack I didn't want to send this away for a full refurb because um, I just sort of like the way it is at the moment but it is leaking a little bit I did notice on the subframe there is um, a bit of power steering fluid there so I'm going to take it off and I'm going to refurbish what I can myself so I'm going to be changing the ends of these and just refurbing what I can change the gaiters I may even go inside and see if I can change the uh, seals as well and just make sure it is as good as I can get it and then um, yeah iron out any problems okay take off the heat protection so there's two bolts on here but one of them has come through so I'm gonna to have to either use a big wash on that or replace this section put the bolt back in so what have we got we've got one tube coming down where does it go it goes uh, along here along the back and then into a connector down there and the other one comes down and goes into those connectors there so yeah kind of flower return then it's held on with a little bracket here so we've got a tiny little bolt there I'm going to undo that if I've got a socket small enough for which I have oh it's too small what is that it's one of those bloody bizarre sizes what the hell am I going to get <laughs> am I going to get that done this seems to be an in-between sort of size what a bloody pain what a bloody pain Nothing's bloody easy. Oh, there we go. That might work. That might work. Nope. Wants to be a pain. It wants to be a pain, right? Okay. This looks like overkill, but it's uh, all I can think of. Gotta do what you gotta do. There we go. That's all it needs. It's just enough to free the hydraulic lines. Actually, we need to take the right the way up because it's um, it's a clamp. There we go, that comes uh, completely off there. I'll resecure that in a minute. Yeah, and it seems under here, so these are the two lines that we've just freed off there, and then they both go into here, and they they seem to be attached with just one nut on a kind of adapter, so I'm gonna take that nut out, and then I'm guessing both of those lines will pop out together, and that'll be our rack free. That's a 10 mil. Here we go. There's a little plate there. One pulls out, <laughs> that one bloody resists. 
Yeah, so they both pull out and that's the rack free. So we must remember which way around these go. So the zigzaggy one seems to go further away from the actual uh, steering attachments. And the smoother one is, um, yeah, nearest to the driver. Oh my God, fluid everywhere. There we go. There we go, that's the rack completely separated. Okay, let's go on with sorting out under the wheel arches. So I need to take this cover off here. This appears to be held on with a rivet down there and one up there. So what I'm gonna do now is drill it out and uh, take the cover off so I can get to this little bit of rust up there and make sure everything's properly sealed. Okay, that's the two rivet tops drilled off, but it is still hooked in, so it seems to have a hook. There's one there, one up there, and as far as I can see, yeah, just one there as well. So they just might need a bit of help just prying them out. But they ain't attached no more. They're just a bit rusty. Ah, there we go. So it just comes off like that. That's all it is, piece of timber there, so I'm going to clean this up, rust treat that and then we'll reattach that when the time comes. And yeah, it's just covering up these terminals here, so yeah, looks like something critical, so we're not going to mess with those. I'm just going to go around the outside and just treat all the rust I can get right up into the corner now, and then we will replace this when we're done. It's all completely sound there, all I'm going to do is just take the screwdriver and just scrape off the worst bits, take it down as far as I can and all around this bit as well. Then it's going to have a wire brush and then put the rust treatment on it. Yeah, so the surface rust basically stops here, just to that line. So we just chip off all the big chunks so that the rust killer can get underneath it and then we can polish it all up and just scrape off any surface bubbles. Yeah, I do want to get as much of this done as possible before the winter with regard to the rust treatment and uh, sealing it because you do sort of forget how miserable working in the freezing cold is on a car really so I want to get this um, sealed at least and then we can just go through and, and rebuild it so this is good this is the oil from the factory that they spray inside the chassis legs and in all the inaccessible places dripping through so it shows there is some in there i'm going to sort this out too so this is completely solid i'm going to scrape this off clean it all up and then apply the rust killer to this as well take the bolt out and just scrape off the loose. So I'm just going to go back down here and pop these little rust blisters just on the sill there because I don't want to cause big damage to this but I am just going to take that little section out there and then we're going to put the rust treatment on that so it is basically stable and then when we put the wing back on we know that that's all treated and there's nothing creeping in underneath there but I don't want to go massively disrupting this seal because uh, it might be a while before we can sort out the cosmetics of the car. Just take a little bit of that off, just make sure it hasn't crept under there, but that looks fine to me. Okay, let's have a little bit of wire brush. Be rude not to, wouldn't it? Just got to be careful not to catch the other bits of paint up with the edge of the bristles there. Let's get the wire wheel on that. Okay, good. Just going to undo this nut and this will actually free off that power steering line on the bracket behind here and also just free it up at the front so we can properly seal around it. There we go. Just going to loosen these two earth strap bolts as well so we haven't got the tails of those sticking through. Drill out the ABS sensor bracket rivet. and take out the last of the plastic plugs. Okay. 
Right, now I'm going to go over this with the same wheel that I used on the back of the car, the heavy preparation wheel on the grinder. Make sure all these wires are out of the way. We don't want to snare them with the grinder. That'd be a great Sunday, wouldn't it? Right, let's take the brake hose off as well so I can clean this bracket. Undo the brake line. Okay, let me just pull out the clip. How can that be so bloody difficult? Come on, there we go. Magnifico! <laughs> okay. So I'm running over this area here where the subframe attaches with a wire wheel but I am actually going to take some safety water and give it a really good wash and then we're going to finish preparing it, rust treat it, prime it and then get the anti-gravel on because this won't be accessible when the subframe's back on. Okay that's had a really good go with the wire preparation wheel on the grinder so I just need to spray a little bit of brake cleaner on this just to get the stick where a label's been on there off and uh, just go over it with some sandpaper just in the tiny little bit so you can't really get to with the larger wheel there and um, yeah make sure that's properly clean then what we're going to do is apply the rust killer. Okay I'm going to use the hammer right again same stuff that I used on the back seemed to work okay put a tower down because it will definitely uh, stain your driveway and uh, yeah I'm just going to go over all of this and work it into all the little pits all the little gaps and then wait for it to dry. Gonna go right down here on the chassis leg too behind all of the um, pipes and everything here so that's why we loosen all the pipes off. And just go under here where the subframe will reattach to. I am going to do the entire underside of this car, but at the moment the priority is treating the areas and getting the anti-gravel on. Uh, on the bits that um, we can't do when the subframe's back on, the rest we can do later, but at the moment we'll just get this done. Get it into the corners where the wing attaches and all along the seams. And on the outside, take that bolt out and just give the rest of it a really good coating. So yeah, I'm just going to coat the whole lot. I mean, it is, um, most of it's just here really. There is a few speckles everywhere, but really I'm just going to go through it and coat the whole lot. Just easier and I won't miss anything. You can use seam sealer on this just to get a better finish and to, you know, stop sort of anything going in between the seams here. I would do if I had any, I don't have any with me at the moment, so we're just going to sort of go ahead with it as it is. This, is, this will all be under the wheel arch liner anyway, uh, but there is something else that you can do there. Of course, it's blowing a bloody gale today. Spray it tomorrow. At least it ain't raining. Still, it's only 10 o'clock, there's still time. There we go, so that's had a really good go with the rust killer. As it dries, it does actually go black, so we can sort of see what's been treated, what hasn't. That's gone nice and uh, nice and black there now. So what I'm going to do is let this dry properly, wait for this wind to die down, and then we're going to spray the primer on it. Okay, that's had a night to dry. Let's get the primer on. I am going to see if I can undo these two bolts here and just very delicately move these uh, terminals back through that hole there. The same with the other wire, just so it's all nice and clear. I normally wouldn't want to move these because they are old and I, I don't want to encourage problems, but I think in order to get the primer all the way around the top properly, as well as the anti-gravel, we do need to move those. 10 mil. 
and then the whole block will just lift off and we can just move it out the way. I'll do the same with the other one as well. So these two are off and I did actually notice that I can take this off as well. So that would have been easier when I was doing that to uh, take this apart so I could get the rust killer in there. I'm going to go over that last little bit there. But yeah, that'd be the easy way to do it. Bit of newspaper around the pipes. I'll do the same with the terminals as well. Always looks a bit lash when you get overspray, so I'll uh, try and avoid that. That's so the first coat there. It's really good coverage, goes on really well. So I'm just waiting 15 minutes for this to dry, and then I'm going to give it another two coats and make sure that it's um, properly sealed there. I've also done underneath here and the uh, yeah, that side of the chassis rail there, underneath that, and um, yeah, just gone under the back here where the front subframe is going to bolt back on there so we can get the anti gravel on that and make sure it's all properly sealed. Okay, I've been having a look at the rust hole on the other side and to be honest that is too small to weld I reckon so what I'm going to do with this is use a fiberglass reinforced filler that will actually go over that and the reason I can do that is, um, I mean I can basically get my get my hand behind there, that is um, single skinned and then obviously we've got the um, engine, um, well crash rail here so this is um, sort of designed to deform if you hit something, connected to high grade steel which is the um, passenger cell so that's more rigid this bit here is single skin so it's not doing anything it's not holding anything it is literally a thin piece of metal that has um, come through there so I mean if I if I wanted to weld that or get that welded I'd have to probably cut it out and mess around with that which wouldn't be um, easy I wouldn't have thought so I do think the best way I'm going to clean this up with the heavy preparation wheel make sure everything is completely killed off with a rust killer and then use the uh, fiberglass reinforced filler on this and this is the fiberglass reinforced filler. So this is actually the strongest stuff that I've used. I've used it on the van before and uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't crack, it doesn't do anything. It literally, it's just like putting, <laughs> putting metal on basically. You can't even really sand it down. It is uh, extremely strong and it is flexible so it won't shatter or cause any problems. So yeah, that's the way I'm gonna go with that. Okay, before we start prepping this up, ready for the fiberglass filler, I need to remove some of the bits that I did on the other side. So this is uh, pressed up against the house, so it's a bit more tricky to fill, but what I'm gonna do is just what I did on the other side, drill out this rivet here, take out the ABS uh, wire holder, take out these plastic bits here. I'm gonna loosen off this brake line, bend it back because we're gonna be replacing these brake lines anyway, take out the hose, gonna take off this plastic cowling for the auxiliary drive belt, and also this piece for the air conditioning. I'm gonna undo this, this, and then one round the other side, and then see if I can actually move that out of the way so I can recondition and rust treat this piece of the chassis rail. Looking up here, it looks like as I follow these pipes through, there is some connections down there. So it may be the case I can actually reach in there, undo those and uh, withdraw this whole assembly with um, the dryer included. And then I get basically good access for all of this. So we'll have a look at that and see how that goes. Okay, anti-gravel. We're gonna do three coats of this about 10 minutes apart. So I'm just going to do the bit where the base of the wing attaches to. I am going to overlap the anti gravel slightly outside where the wing goes to just to protect it because it's going to be a little while before we can get this properly sprayed. And then when I do do this, I'll just scrape this back off again, but it's only just to protect in the winter. And yes, I have run out of masking tape. <laughs> Oh, the chemicals in here are killer, even with a mask on. Oh yeah, Duffman needs to find some fresh air. There we go, really good result. So I'm going to let that uh, dry for a bit and then um, we're going to clear coat that to give it the hard surface on top because anti-gravel does mark a little bit. So yeah, gone right under here. It's got to, all the mounts with the subframe will be attached to. We've obviously done the bits where the wing will go onto, so that's been properly sealed. All the way up in the top there, we've got right at the top of the strut mount. And I have gone, well, make doubly sure that everything behind here has been done and particularly this join here because that is the bit that um, was more rusted than the other bits. And then if we go around here, it's been done on the other side of the chassis rail too. 
don't know what you can just see under there or you can see all the back of there too so yeah that has been done as we um, do more work on this car one day probably I will actually take the engine out we'll, we'll be doing other bits to it we'll be sort of messing around with it and um, get it in the garage one day take the engine out and uh, I will completely refurb the engine bay but for now all we can do with the engine in is just do the rusty bits that we can see and just um, make sure that we treat everything that is immediately visible and um, basically the rest of it is fine it's just um, just a bit dirty I mean I might even just treat it a little bit of the top there and that's it so coverage on that was two cans so we've got two dead cans there and that is uh, yeah two full cans I expect probably I'll do maybe half a can with a clear coat and then um, that is the under sealing done Okay, next job we're going to take off the air conditioning compressor. It's basically, yeah, you've got the compressor, you've got a clutch on there. Uh, quite a complicated piece. I'm going to change as a whole unit because I'm not going to be, I mean, we might open it up, have a look inside it, but I'm not going to be reusing this. I'm going to change it for one that's been refurbished to rather a new one. So first thing we've got to do is take off the auxiliary drive belt. Okay, so this is a routing of the auxiliary drive belt on the two litre cars with air conditioning. So we've got the air conditioning compressor there. If your car doesn't have air conditioning, the belt will go from there to the bottom of the crankshaft pulley. So what we've got here is the air conditioning compressor, crankshaft pulley, water pump, we've got the uh, tensioner there, we've got the alternator, idler pulley there, and then we're back to the power steering pump. So that's the routing of the belt. And uh, that's how it goes. So what I'm gonna do now is reach up, put a socket over this with a long extension bar, wind this in a bit to slacken off the belt, and then the belt, I can just literally pull it off. And that's the auxiliary drive belt removed. Okay, 15 mil spanner, because the socket won't go in there. I've got to reach up here, and then we're gonna turn the tensioner clockwise to release the belt tension. And then we're gonna pull the drive belt from the position it's in. And that just comes off. And release the tension again and then the belt will come off like so obviously if this wasn't all taken apart we'd remove the plastic cover that uh, covers up the base so that's there we go that's the belt removed okay take out the 10 mil bolt on the front of the compressor and then the block holding on the two pipes should just pull out there there we go. Let me undo the electrical connector. It basically goes down this way, goes under the left hand pipe and then makes its way back up to the main sort of trunking loom there. So let's just pull that out. So that was this one, come from here, goes down there, it goes under that pipe there and then into the compressor. As far as I can see how it comes off is we've got four 13 mil bolts. So we've got one, two, and then three, four. So we take these off and then it should just come separated from its bracket. Okay, oh, there we go. Yeah, it just comes off like so. That's what we got, that's the compressor. This is the electronic clutch on this side, so I plan to basically either change as a whole unit or get this one reconditioned. Not sure um, what I'm gonna do yet, I need to look into that, and then basically we've got the sticker down here if anybody's hunting for one. This is the uh, information sticker on it. And uh, yeah, so uh, that's gonna be sorted out and we'll get that um, either changed or refurbished. So I'll just leave that down there. What? What's that? What's that power steering pump? You wanna, you wanna come off as well? You've seen how easy it is and you wanna be changed too? Well, okay, yeah, and as we're all apart, we can, uh, yeah, we'll take you off as well then. Power steering pump seems to be held on with four bolts. So we undo this one, this one, and there's two below as well. We take off this pipe here, which looks a bit like a cooler pipe, so we need to be careful not to uh, mix that up when we put it all back together. And then there's another nut down here that holds on this pipe, so we need to undo that, and then the pump should come off. Okay, 18 mil spanner. And just be very careful not to knacker the green wire and the power steering line there. Undo the last bit by hand, put a bucket underneath it because it will lose a bit of oil. 
Yeah, there is a gasket on there, seems to have had it, so we need to make sure that one of those goes back on when we reassemble it. Take the clamp off. Remove the pipe, just have the bucket underneath it, just preparing for a little bit of uh, power steering fluid to come out. Oh, no, it's okay, it's good. We just let this massive jet fly out the way. Now we've got to take out the loosened bolts now, so we take these out and then the power steering pump will come out. So I've already loosened these off. One, two, three, and floor. Not only joking, we've got hold of it, but it is now loose, so we just lift it off. And it just comes out like that, and we can change it as a whole unit. Oh, hello, air conditioning pump. Hey, hey, power steering pump. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Okay, several coats of clear lacquer, 15 minutes apart. Quite thin coats. Just waiting for the lacquer to dry, and then I've got to do exactly the same on the other side. So if you come across here, this is the bit that I haven't done, and there is a uh, huge difference there. Okay, let's clean this up. So there we go, it's had a go with the preparation wheel and had the larger chunks chipped off with a screwdriver. So I've got another little bit there as it opens up, but that is well within the capabilities of the flexible fillet there, so I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go over it with rust killer, let it dry for a day, and then we'll get the filler on it. I'll just quickly show you the other side as well. There you go, just put the screwdriver through there just to show you where that goes, but we can get to the other side there. So what I'll do is I will go in there, clean that up, and then I'll put the rust killer on there and we'll get that treated too. But before we go any further, we're going to take out these two air conditioning pipes. We're doing this, so we might as well do it properly. This is a really fiddly job. Real pain in the ass, but we've got to do this, I think, to get the right results. So it's these two pipes here. You can see these two. Well, this one's damaged anyway, so I'm going to replace them up to the bulkhead. This is a bit of the loom, so that's going to stay in. But basically, these run around here. They have a little bracket sort of holding onto the rail there. And then if we come down here they go into the dryer, so I want to take all of that assembly off. So they run up here from the dryer, they go along here, and then they go in through the hole in the wing there. They run behind here, they have an electrical connection on there, so that needs to be undone. And then well, one of them has an electrical connection, then they run along here, and um, they're basically just underneath the brake master cylinder. Let me just see if I can get this phone in to, uh, to show you. So I get you down there. So we can see there they are, so I'm going to undo that, and then there's one next to it as well. So that's the, uh, I presume the flow and the return, so we're going to get those out and withdraw the whole assembly. That will give us good access to the um, space underneath the wing, and we are going to change those pipes too, because, um, you know, they're quite old now. Okay, I'm going to struggle these off now, so it's almost impossible to film because it's all tucked behind the bulkhead. So I'm just going to do it, and uh, if there's anything that I sort of find when I, you know, take it all to bits, I'll let you know. Um, you don't have to do this probably, I'm only doing it because I'm really picky and I'm doing the whole car and I want it to be absolutely as good as I can get it, but probably you don't need to, but I can see a little bit of wear on those pipes and as I'm going to recondition the entire system anyway, it'd be a shame to leave those behind us, so um, yeah, I'm going to take them off. Okay, the terminal is really easy, it's just something that I couldn't see because of its position, so I was pushing that in. You actually need to uh, lift it out, so you're going to want to pull that tab that way and that will save you about 10 minutes of um, pissing around with this. Okay, before we take the pipes out, who goes where? So this is when we put it back together. So the pipe with the electrical connector on is the pipe that goes the furthest this way. So the nearest to the passenger side. So that's that one there. So this is the pipe with the electrical connector. And then the other pipe is just behind it there. And that's just so we know which pipe goes where when we put it back together. So that's one of the bulkhead ones off. Let's just do the other one. The phone's on its side, by the way, so uh, <laughs> if you're trying to find this yourself, that one comes off. Like so.
disconnect the pipes at the back there's almost certainly a special tool but how I'm going to do this is um, like this so this is basically very similar to the one at the back I've got a bottle top cut it down into like a half um, half a bottle top and I'm gonna compress it like that and then push it in into that little gap there with a pair of pliers and then that should pop out but that is very fiddly I'm not sure whether that's going to work and as I said it probably is a special tool I'm probably making life difficult for myself but yeah let's give that a go all right, that is well above my pay grade. That is very, very difficult. I just can't get the top of the bottle in there and um, you have to do it from the back, basically. So um, you will need a special tool for that. So maybe we'll track down one of those tools and do it in a future episode, or um, maybe I'll do it when the engine's out and I can get a bit more um, bit more access in there. But it will be done, not now, but uh, so we will get it done in the future. But what I have got is all the um, bits and bobs from this side is now loose and it is unclipped. So I can move these pipes around now so I can get these get these moved around properly get in there and um, seal all of that and also we can put the rust treatment on this and get the filler on prime it and then put the anti gravel on it so we aren't um, really that restricted for access now but these are damaged and I will be changing them just not today all right let's have a go see if it can be done so I'm going to do a little bit of WD-39 around the spring there just to free that off a bit and then I'm going to see if I can use a hose clamp to release this I have seen it done but it looks bloody difficult. Let's give it a try. Okay, I think the problem is that I've bent this the wrong way and I've got the ridges on the outside and it's digging into the spring, so I'm gonna bend it the other way. So I've got the smoother side facing the spring. So I think it might be catching. Yeah, this needs to be completely round, and this one isn't. I'm going to cut another one. Right, I've made another clip just to see if I can get one a bit smoother, but um, I mean, it looks the same really, but we'll see if this one goes in. And just get it to the right shape. You can't have any bumps there where you make it. It has to be almost perfectly circular. That's gone in quite nicely. Let's just see if we can compress or move that spring and release these two sections. There we go. That's how we do it. God, that was, uh, yeah, 40 minutes trying to do that, but that's how we do it. So I wouldn't recommend it but it can be done so yeah that was literally just pushing this up here and um, yeah moving that and it does come undone so the spring inside there gets compressed but um, yeah there must be a tool somewhere there's no way I'm going to be able to do that from the from the bulkhead there's just not enough space um, I mean maybe I'll, I'll give it another go but you know that is um, that is very very tough I wouldn't recommend doing that I'd definitely get the tool Okay, get the rust killer on here, brush it on nice and thickly and we're going to go on to the other side as well, get it all in there too. And I will be preparing and rust treating the rest of this wheelage once the filler is dry. Okay, the rust killer is nice and dry, let's get the fiberglass reinforced filler on. This is the filler I'm using. You can almost see the fibers in there and this is the quantities I'm going to be mixing it up in. Mix that together, then we're good to go. So you're not going to get a smooth surface with this filler. It's very slimy and you can feel all the fibers in it when you mix it up as well. So this is really just for filling in holes. If you want to put a top coat on it, you need a different filler and that'll be the coat that you would sand down. And just apply that to the area. There we go, that's all we need, just nice localised repair there. You won't be able to sand that down really when it's done, so try and get it as smooth as possible, because obviously it's got the fibres in it, it really is the strongest stuff I've, I've seen. You can't, um, you can't do anything with it, so just get it nice and smooth, just with your spatula, and um, leave it to set. And of course I mixed up too much there, but uh, there we go. 
So I'm just going up to Halfords to get a few bits for the car. We have to go back down the road that I probably reckon the SG170 was built for. It's the, I think it's probably the perfect road for it. So uh, we're going to go down it. I may be rude not to, wouldn't it? We're obviously in the van. You'll be on the black view, so I apologise for the quality, but we're going to have a run down there and I'll show you uh, what road it is. So we're in the van. I think we've got anywhere between 60 and 75 horsepower, so you can still have a drive. They are still quite engaging, though, even when you're in quite a low-powered vehicle and you're on a good road. And you've got a bit of vehicle going over what's going on. It is, uh, yeah, you still, you know, you still have a good drive. 40 mile an hour speed limit, mirror check, just coming around the bend here, mirror on the right hand side, staying at 40 mile an hour. We've got a junction on the right hand side, so we're looking at that. We're moving up to the centre of the road for the left hand bend as our limit point disappears. Limit point's opening right up now, mirror check, we're in fourth gear, we're coming out to a national speed limit. Mirror check on the left, and we're full power. Full power, just moving to the crown of the road so we can get a better view around the corner. And we are doing a mirror check, staying in fourth gear. We're just going to take it up into fifth as our limit point opens up. Mirror check, we've got chevrons on the side of the road there, so we've got a very sharp bend coming up. Mirrors, brakes, brakes, brakes. We're going to block shift down to third gear, flip the throttle, feel the weight chance of moving around from the car. Junch on the left hand side, keeping wide. Full power. Fourth gear, full power, mirror check. Moving to the left hand side of the road to get a better view around the corner. Staying in fourth gear, letting the revs build up. Coming up to 60 mile an hour, we're just going into fifth gear, getting off the power. Got a lay by, no one in it, mirror check. Moving to the centre of the road, keeping our limit point within view. Limit points now opening back up, oncoming vehicles, mirrors. Hard acceleration, 60 mile an hour, backing off there. So we're going to move to the left hand side of the road, watching our limit points there. Limit points now disappearing, brakes, brakes, flip into fourth gear, feeling the weight transfer to the left hand side of the car, mirror check, moving to the centre of the road, feeling the weight transfer over the driver's wheel, oncoming vehicle, we're going to back right off here, we're coming right down there behind this vehicle, so that's why we keep our limit points clear, because you never freaking know what's around the corner, so mirrors, back on the power, 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 power. And brakes, 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 brakes. Off the brakes, flip the throttle into third gear, feel the weight transfer, very, very light power. Just staying behind this one here, mirrors. Moving to the middle of the road, looking right around the corner there. Limit point is disappearing, you're staying in third gear, off the brakes, very light power around the corner. Do a mirror check, car is settled, full power, change of road surface, fourth gear, full power. The brakes up ahead, oncoming vehicles, paint on the road, mirror check, so. Brakes, 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 brakes. Off the brakes, flip the throttle into third gear. Watching our limit points there. Mirror check, moving to the centre of the road. Staying in third gear, mirrors again. Just coming right off it, letting the weight settle on the vehicle. Moving to the driver's side. Everything settled, mirror check, full power. Fourth gear, full power. Got blind crest here, so we're coming right off the power. Can't see anything, could be anything down there. Mirror check, and back on the power again. Full power, fifth gear, full power. Coming up to 60, so we're backing off there. Mirror check, we've got a kink in the road there. Brakes, 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 flip it into fourth gear. Mirrors, moving out to the left hand side of the road, paint on the road. We're staying as left as we can, looking right round there. At our limit point, we've got mirrors there, so we're going to back right off, obviously a blind junction. And now we've got mirrors again, back on the power, so that's full power. And it's a bit full power. We've got a vehicle turning left there, so we're coming off it, and we also have a turning on the left, turning on the right, so just looking at that. Now we're full power again, and we've got our limit point right the way down the road, so we're mirrors, we're coming right off it, right on the brakes there. Brakes, 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 drop it into fourth, make sure we can stop if there's anything blocking that. Houses on the left and the right, looking right down the road there, we've got oncoming vehicles and a blind crest, so mirrors. Can't really see much there. The camera's a little bit higher. I can't see much now. The view's opened up, so full power. And fifth gear, full power. We've got signs up ahead, paint from the road. Right hand bend sign. Slight change of road surface. Brakes, 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 brakes. Hit the throttle. Very lightly around the corner there, feeling the weight transfer. Just on the left hand side, mirrors. Looking right up ahead, we've got 20 mile an hour bend sign. So we know it's just sharp. We're staying fourth gear, lots of paint on the road, light application of the brakes, off the brakes, very very lightly around the corner, mirrors, moving to the centre of the road, limit point shut right down there so we can't really see what's around that corner, and now we go back on the power there, big lorry up ahead, so mirrors, watching out what could be poking
taken out behind that. Newby is opening back up again there. We've got a bend up ahead, near a check, cream the road, and a left hand bend. So an MLA bow on the right hand side. Change of road settings coming up, mirrors. Brakes, 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 brakes. Limit point shot right down there. Flip it, we're into third gear. Weights transferring, lots of shattered road surface here. Near a check, light on the power, change of road surface, and into fourth gear. Near us, moving to the centre of the road, getting a good look around there. Light like how far we can see, left hand mirror. And we're just going to stay in fourth gear here as our limit point reduces and take it round the bed. So yeah, this is the road. I mean, this is a very, very low powered vehicle. If you get a, my Ford ST 170 on this, it is absolutely lovely. You can really, you know, you don't exceed, never exceed the speed limits, but you uh, you can really work the car hard. It's really nice. And I say, I just thought I'd show you the road. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to get it sorted. So there we go, that's most of the bits off with the exception of the manifold and the catalytic converter. So I'm going to be taking those off in the next episode so I can get to the oil separated behind them and change that. But everything else is off, we've got the air conditioning pump off or the air conditioning compressor, power steering pump, um, rack, you know, all the major bits are off so I'm, I need to start chasing around now, try and find the bits or try and get them reconditioned and you know, some of the bits we're going to recondition on the table as well so I need to buy kits for that, we need to do the calipers too and um, you know, get all the suspension components done and get the stuff to the powder coaters and you know, hundreds and hundreds of things so we will we will get on it so yeah it's basically sealed now ready for the winter so the um, passenger side has got the anti-gravel on it's all been rust treated clear coats on it the driver side I'm just waiting for that feeling to set and then we're gonna basically prime that and anti-gravel it as well but it's um it's nearly there so uh, yeah next episode we're gonna start to put some stuff back on this car so thank you very much for watching guys I'll see you for the next one